Hey, you could have watched this video a day early. Check out my Patreon for more details. Hello today. Welcome back to Monster Hunter. Uh, today, we are going to be discussing not the channel and how it's performing. Uh, I know, big shit, right? Um, instead today, I want to get my thoughts out on a game that I recently just finished and I want to uh, discuss it and I want to see if anybody else has played this specific game to um, get an idea of like like my opinions on it because beating this game really did make me think a lot about you know my tastes in games in general but anyway we'll get into the real discussion once we get into a hunt um as per the video game we're just going to continue on with the story quests we're just going to continue on with the plot i really have nothing i want to grind for at this moment um i wanted to grind for the uh gormagala charge blade but uh, apparently that one is uh, not, like I, I tried to grind for that earlier, but I can't fight Shigaru Magala right now, so can't really do that. Uh, I'll just go in with the, uh, with that one still. I don't know, well, you know what? I'll do a little bit of a sweep of what I can do and we'll just go straight into a quest. All right, for the quest, we're gonna go back to our roots for a little bit, and we're gonna hunt uh, some more high rank Celtis Queen, just because uh, I want that cool drill hammer again. I want to make it uh, good for high rank. So uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of that. It's not gonna be nearly as hard as getting the full armor set, but you know it'll still cause a little bit of a challenge. Anyway, so the actual discussion that I wanted to get into uh, last night at time of recording, I finished uh, Yakuza Kiwami, right? And this is my first Yakuza game, and it's my first time beating a game in this series and really playing a game in this series. And uh, before I get into my issues with the game, I wanna say it's very good, and a lot of the problems I have with it are personal to me, so if you don't see if you don't have the same issues that I do in terms of game story and game plot structures then you're more than likely going to enjoy the game right and I don't want to I don't want my problems with the game to turn people off from something they might enjoy anyways uh before we like and now, now that that like little disclaimer is out of the way uh let's talk about my problems with uh games and how story is presented in games um because uh, like i've played a lot of a lot of games right and some of them do a better job of telling a story than others that's just fact right some games are better at telling a story than others right um yakuza has a very well made an interesting plot with a lot of characters and a lot of relations between those characters and there's really good twists during it there's a lot of good shit going on in the plot of Yakuza Kiwami right uh also Yakuza Kiwami has a lot of uh interesting side missions and a lot of gameplay stuff it has probably one of my favorite rival systems in games at the moment um so you, you have a game that has good gameplay and a good story. What's the, what's the problem then? Why do you have such a problem with this game? My problems arise because of the way it, because of the way the game presents both the story and the gameplay and how it doesn't do a good job of incorporating both of those together. What do I mean by that? So in the, the, Oh god, I'm gonna get hit. Yep, there it is. So, in the time I played Yakuza Kiwami, the plot can basically be summarized as... Um, well, I'm not gonna spoil anything, I should also clarify. So, if you're interested in Kiwami, and someone was like, Oh god, I didn't set up my buttons properly. Great! And if you, if you think that you might be interested in this game, again, don't let my opinions get in the way of that. Right. If you enjoy this game, that is absolutely your fucking jam. 
right? That's your thing, you got your thing that you want to do. I'm basically just stalling because I'm about to fucking die. Uh, please. Please, 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 please. So, um, during the plot of Yakuza Kiwami, you are, uh, watching Kiryu, uh, do his thing, and you're watching him go through the plot and, and fight some dudes, and, you know, lose people who, that's important to him, because, you know, it's a, it's a plot line in a video game, you know, like, fucking, of course that shit's gonna happen, right? A lot of shit's going on. Uh, but then you get to the gameplay, and the gameplay is completely separate from the story, right? The story is almost entirely delivered to you through cutscenes. Not, not in its entirety, but almost entirely. Meanwhile, the actual interesting part being, okay, cool. The actual interesting part being the gameplay, that plot in the gameplay is not at all, how do I explain this? So, in Yakuza, there is a system called the Majima Everywhere system, as there is a character named Goro Majima in the game. S how he works is you're walking around the streets of Kamurocho, and you've got uh, shit that you gotta do, and you're trying to get it done right, but then Majima comes in and is like, yo, Kiryu, uh, let's fight, and you fight him. And the more you fight him, the more moves you unlock, and the stronger you become. But in turn, Majima also becomes stronger. And that's like actually genuinely interesting, right? And the 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 time you're playing the game with Majima and you're and you're fighting him and you're and you're ranking up in the Majima Everywhere system, and you're doing all this cool shit with him, like that's fun. That is inherently interesting to me as a player, right? All of that is completely disconnected from the story of the game. Like, it doesn't matter how much... Like, you could absolutely... You could 100% skip every side mission, every side story, every... Everything. You could skip the game. And the plot would continue on exactly as it is. You don't need to play the video game... Oh my god. You don't need to play the video game to make the plot continue. You really don't. Right? Like, there are a couple boss fights here and there that are like, oh man, did you, did you play fucking Pocket Racer? Did you, did you get stronger? I am finding no openings, holy shit. I'm like too focused on this discussion. <laughs> I'm really trying to play the video game, but I'm mostly just running around and being a shitter. I'm gonna get hit. It's like, did you, did you do, did you do the side missions? Like, there are points in the game where it's like, hey, did you do the side missions? By that I mean, um, the game expects you to level up and get stronger and do all that stuff, right? But it doesn't give you a narrative reason to do all of that stuff. It only gives you, like, it only gives you that, uh, question based on, hey, did you level up? It's not, it's not, hey... Uh, one of your old, uh, Yakuza compatriots is at the Pocket Circuit Bar, and you need to go talk to him, or the Pocket Circuit Rally, go talk to him, and then Kiryu would be like, oh man, I remember, I remember Pocket Circuit, and then it would give you the whole backstory of how Kiryu played Pocket Circuit and do all that stuff, right? Like, that's, that's a meld of the plot and the gameplay and the side missions and all that stuff. It's not a very good meld, right? Obviously, I don't have the exact answers to everything, and I don't know exactly how to make the gameplay better or make the story flow better with the game. But it's an idea, right? Um, when you play the game, you have no reason to go to any of the side missions, right? And you might be thinking, well, the, the reason you'd want to go to the side missions is because they're fun. It's like, yeah, okay, but if I'm playing a video game, like, if I'm playing the game to get the story, which, I mean, that's pretty much all Yakuza is, really, uh, it's got, uh, it's got its story. Like, so far, Yakuza is two games, right? It's a narrative, and it's an open world, uh, uh, an open world adventure game, right? Those two games barely interact with each other. Um, it's, it's very hard, it's very hard for me to feel invested in the plot when I'm too busy fighting Majima. 
the final battle with Majima was way more impactful to me than the final battle of the game. And the reason being is because I was so invested in Majima because there was that meld of gameplay and and plot, right? Like, over the course of you ranking up in Majima everywhere, you learn more about Majima as a character. You learn more about him and his struggles and how he uh, interacts with the world and everything. And that's interesting. It's very interesting. Because Majima is, in general, just an interesting character. But, oh god. Yep, 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 yep. I didn't bring any adamant seeds. Uh, I think I'll be fine. I think I'll be fine. Oop, my phone just rang. <laughs> but a as it stands, the characters that I, I quote-unquote meet in the story by watching a cutscene, I feel no connection to them because I'm just watching them. Right, like, if I'm going to watch a movie, I'm going to watch a movie. But Yakuza isn't a movie, it's a game. Right, that's that's what a video game is. It's a game, first and foremost. Like, well, fuck you and your story, how is the game melding with the story? Like, you can tell a story in interesting ways, like, uh, fucking Return of the Obra Dinn. Return of the Obra Dinn is a fantastic example, right? The game is to figure out the story. And that's what it is, it's a puzzle game, right? Oh my god, uh, this defense down is gonna fucking kill me, I swear to god. I should've brought, like, armor skins or something. I told myself I wouldn't need armor skins, and, you know, what what an idiot I am. Um, like, th that's, that's a whole game, right? But, but in Yakuza, the game is not the story. The game is the game, right? And they could've done a better job at making the story the game, but they didn't, for one reason or another. And it's very obvious they can do that because they were able to do that with Majima. Right? They were able to make me, as a player, care about Majima through the gameplay. Not just because, hey, you need to care about Majima, he's related to this character. That's the plot of it. The game basically just presents you with all these characters and says, hey, you need to care about these characters. And it's like, yeah, okay, if I'm watching a movie, that's how these things handle. That's how these things work, right? But this isn't a movie! So how am I expected to care about any of these characters when the game makes zero effort to give me a reason to care through its gameplay. I've played so many games where they do a fantastic example of characterizing uh, characters, I, what, a, what a weird fucking sentence, uh, and, and, and presenting the plot, and presenting twists, and doing all this stuff through gameplay, not just cutscenes. And I'm sorry I can't get invested in a game like that. That's just not what I'm here for. Here we go. Uh, and it's very frustrating, because there's a lot of really cool things in Yakuza. L right? Like, I really enjoyed Pocket Circuit. I really... I, I actually enjoyed Mezu King. Majima was the greatest part of the game, right? I can... Oh my god, what the fuck? What broke? Ugh, something knocked me off. Great. Um... Oh, you're almost dead. Come on, you can die, you can die. It's like, I, I can't, I just can't. I can't play video games like that. I, like, Outer Wilds, or Control, uh, even No More Heroes, even though its plot is pretty bare bones, it still presents its plot via the gameplay, not just cutscenes, right? Dead Space 1, uh, Half-Life 1, Half-Life 2, even though Half-Life 2's narrative is honestly a little bit weaker than Half-Life 1's. Um, it, like, all of these games... Like, Half-Life 1 is a very specific example because it, it never takes control away from you as the player, right? The narrative unfolds around you. So it makes you feel like you're Gordon Freeman because you literally control him the entire time. Right? I didn't feel like I was Kiryu during the plot sections of Yakuza. I felt like I was him during the gameplay sections. Like, it's like, yeah, when I'm doing fucking Pocket Circuit or Mezu King, and I beat some guy or some kid in the game, it's like, yeah, I, I absolutely feel like I'm Kiryu in that moment. But not when, not when, uh, I'm, I was about to say a very big spoiler in the game, not when a very specific character dies, right? 
Not when any of that shit happens. Uh, give me a second. Okay, whatever. Not when a very specific character dies, right? Because uh, if if you've played, if you've played Yakuza, chapter twelve, when that big character dies, I felt nothing. Now I should clarify. I did take a year-long break 10 hours into the game. Can you stop ringing? I don't know if that's picking up on camera or on microphone or not. I turned off my ringer. I should specify that uh, I did take that year-long break, right? Um, so maybe my problems with the narrative are because of that year-long break. However, counterpoint to that, why didn't the game do any like why didn't the character why didn't the game do anything with the characters and the gameplay right like uh date-san date-san is cool i fought with him i saved his daughter i did a bunch of cool shit with him he was there he was present during the game you know uh shimano wasn't there he was only in cutscenes nishiki wasn't there until the very end of the game right you have all of these characters that are present within the plot of uh, Yakuza, but they don't matter when you're playing the game. You know, when you're doing karaoke and bowling and all this other shit, how on earth is the game going to make you care about these characters when you're too busy playing the video game? The game got in the way of the narrative. I think it's a good way to under. I think it's a good way to say it. Like. I feel like if I were to play another Yakuza game or play Kiwami again, I feel like if I were to play any of these games again, what I would need to do is I would need to play like New Game Plus or on baby shit easy mode so I can skip every side mode. And I understand that that's like sacrilege. It's like, why would you skip the side missions? You're losing out on a bunch of characterization on Kiryu. It's like, well, okay. But then why is character why is my character Kiryu not acting like Kiryu during the cutscenes? There was a cutscene near the end. And this is not spoilers. I'm I'm going to speak in very broad terms and concepts just to make it understandable how my feelings were during this cutscene. Um there was a big battle with a big character and he had a bunch of dudes. By the by the way, Yakuza's gameplay does not lend itself well to fighting a bunch of dudes at once. It really does. It feels a lot better to fight one dude at a time. Um, besides the point. Uh, you fight through all these dudes, and at this point, I've unlocked the strongest move in the game. Right? I'm basically Yakuza Super God. Right? I, 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 I'm, I'm the coolest, biggest dick G ever. Right? And I like the, the 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 boss, the wave of enemies that acted as a boss fight. Um, like I had zero problems taking it out, right? And that's because I took the time to do sixty percent of the game uh, and beat uh, and fully upgrade every single move I had, right? I took all that time to do that. I sp I played that game for forty goddamn hours, right? And then I get to the I get to this boss wave thing, and I get to the end of it without breaking a sweat. Oh my god. I get to the end without breaking a sweat. And after the fight's over, Kiryu is like doubled over in pain. And he's like really trying to he's like barely holding on. And it's like, well wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, no. That's not how that works. Because I beat So that that feeling. I'm sure you guys have experienced this feeling if you've played games for uh for as long as I have, right? And that feeling is called Ludo Narrative Dissonance. It's where there's a disconnect between the gameplay and the cutscenes that are going on, right? And Yakuza, unfortunately, is rife with that shit. There's so, so many times where, like, I, I just want to fight Majima, right? I, I just want to fight Majima. I want to uh, understand more about him. I want to talk to him in the cabaret club. Because Majima does make an appearance. Oh, I didn't bring fucking deodorants. Majima makes an appearance in the cabaret club. And so it's like, oh, hey, you know, uh, fucking let's let you got to talk to him in there, right? Okay, but in order to talk to Majima in the cabaret club, or not cabaret club, excuse me, in the hostess club, 
you need to talk to one of the hostesses first. And I'm like, well, why do I give a fuck about the hostess? And the, the, some of you might be thinking, well, that's more story. Why wouldn't you want to get more story in the game? Because the game has made no effort to make me care about the story through its gameplay. Right? Uh, uh, for example, in Outer Wilds... Also, I just don't give a shit. Like, I, I personally have a big problem with uh, hostess clubs and things like that. They just feel icky. You know, I, 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 I am not a fan of how that sort of stuff works. <laughs> Feels, it makes me feel gross. Beside the point. Um, why, why would I give a shit about the story when the game has already made it very clear to me that the gameplay gets in the way of it? Um, like, I try to... I don't know. I'm trying to play the game and fight Majima and understand more about him, but then the game is like, well, no, now you need to care about Shimano. And I'm like, well, who the fuck is Shimano? Why would I give a shit about him? Again, this isn't a fucking movie. Like, if this was a movie, it's like, okay, I'm here to watch a story unfold. I'm here to remember characters and their relationships between each other. Like, that's, that's the enjoyment of a movie right, is you're watching the story. Not in a video game. That's not how games work. Games can tell so much, games can tell so many more interesting stories and they can, and they can deliver up a narrative in far more interesting ways than any other form of medium. Any of them. But instead they decide to deliver the story in the same way you would if I'm watching fucking Casablanca. Come on, man. You can do better than this. You obviously have already done better than this. You've shown me Majima. I had way more of an emotional connection to him. Like, I could not give a shit about any of these characters that the game is telling me about because I've, I haven't spent the last 40 hours dealing with them. I've spent the last 40 hours fucking hanging out with Majima and the boys and Date-san and the florist. You know, I've spent all this time doing this stuff. It's like, sh shut the fuck up. Get out of my fucking face. And there you go. Like, th there's a very good summation of my problems with Yakuza. Right? And I, I was talking to a friend of mine. This friend of mine got me into Yakuza in the first place. And uh, thank you again for making me stick with it. Um, it may sound like I hate this game. I really don't. Right, this game, I would give it like a solid seven. You know, there's a lot of really good parts in it, but together they just don't really meld all that well. It's really weird. This is this is the first time I've ever experienced something like this, where I like all the individual parts of a game, but when they meld together, it does not. It doesn't feel nice. Like it doesn't. It doesn't give me a good sense of of flow, and, and narratives narratively speaking. Um, Outer Wilds is another good example of this. Because the, 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 the plot of the game is unraveling the mystery of the universe you're in, or the, the solar system you're in, right? And when you're playing the game, the game introduces you to, the, to this world as like, okay, you're going to go out and explore space. I'm going to get stinky. Yep. Uh, you're going to go out and explore space. And that's it, right? The rest is kind of up to the opening of the game. Because uh, the, the opening of the game is like, hey, all right, I need you to go get the uh, drive keys from whatever, and I need you to talk to them, and I need you to uh, do this. Then the game asks you what you want to do, not the character. It asks you, the player, how you want to interact with this world. And then it gives you a bunch of really vague options. And it's like, oh, I want to uh, figure out more about this thing. Like, because the game opens up and it shows you a bunch of interesting things, right? But the player may or may not be actually interested in these concepts that it's showing. And so then the game asks you, okay, well, what are you interested in? You answer, and then it says, oh, well, you should go to this planet first. And the genius in how that game is, is designed is that no matter what planet you go to first, you're always going to find something interesting. You're always going to find something that would lead you to explore another planet, and then the next one, and then the next one. And it's a cascading kind of narrative. So much interesting stuff happens within the, the structure of that game, right? And 
I it's way more interesting when all of that stuff is described to when all that stuff is presented to you as a player. It becomes not just a story you're watching, it becomes a story you're experiencing. And I can be interested in movies, right? Like, that's not impossible for me to be invested in a movie. I watched Train to Busan for the first time the other day. And that movie's fucking phenomenal. I genuinely fucking love that movie. Like, I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. On the only reason why I wouldn't give it a 10 is because it made me feel really sad at the end. <laughs> um, so, obviously, I do give a shit about story. Like, I... Uh, the moment here in Monster Hunter 4, when you're fighting Shigaru Magala, I missed. When you're fighting Shigaru Magala, and it shows you that amazing cutscene, and it doesn't it doesn't show you that cutscene in a vacuum. I showed you that cutscene in a vacuum, and I kind of did the game a, a, a disservice because throughout the the whole throughout the entirety of this game, you're okay, nice. You're fighting. The, um, you're fighting the Gormagala, right? God, come on, stop. You're fighting the Gormagala. And throughout your time fighting the Gormagala, you fought it like three or four times at this point. And the Shigaru Magala is the same Gormagala you've been fighting throughout the entire game. So you've built a connection with that Gormagala, not just as a character in the world, but as a player. Oh wait, that not that the rare drop? Are you fucking kidding me? Ah, oh, whatever. Right, like, uh, like I said, video games can tell so many more wonderful stories and tell you all these different things and show them in unique and interesting ways. But instead, Yakuza just decides, like, yeah, I'm just gonna fucking play a cutscene and I'm expecting you to care about these characters. But that's not how it works in games. It's just not. Okay. So, uh, we are actually going to... I forgot hot drinks. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. So, uh, we're actually not going to uh, grind up Celtus. Uh, because I actually need to hunt the regular uh, non-queen Celtus to get the hammer. So, uh, I'll just do that off-camera. I'll find a way to do that off-camera and I'll just I'll take care of it there. Anyway, one second, actually. Okay. So, I should be good now. Uh, for whatever reason, in the last quest, my controls were not mapped properly. Uh, hopefully, they're mapped properly this time. Um, what was I talking about? I was talking about uh, Yakuza and its plot and all that stuff. And I feel like I did, a, uh, I feel like I did an okay job of explaining my gripes with this story. Um... As an example, my friends were talking about uh, a specific character uh, in the game, and they're like, oh man, I love this character, I love how cool they are, and I would uh, fucking, I would create another world war for their sake, and I'm just like, sitting there, it's like, okay, yeah, they're fine, you know, guess what, I didn't play the game with them, like, they were present while I was walking around Kamurocho, but there wasn't a, a, a gameplay section where I was with them. You know what I mean? Um, it, 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 it's just, it's, it all goes back to the same fucking thing where it's like, oh man, you know, I, 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 I felt a connection with Majima because his plot was presented to me through the game, not just a cutscene. And I just, I can't get invested to a game when all, when all of its plot is cutscene. You know? Um, Again, uh, like I want to reiterate, uh, uh, Yakuza Kiwami is a very good game, and it has a lot of really good things in it. These are just my personal hook, like, these are just my personal issues with the game. Like, these are not issues that everyone's going to come across. Like, that's just not gonna happen. Uh, if you do feel the same way about a game, about games like this, uh, let me know, actually. I would actually be very interested to have a conversation with some people about this kind of thing. Um, did I waste my time playing Yakuza Kiwami? Absolutely not. Uh, did I appreciate the time I had with it? Absolutely. Um, it, it, it's it's given me a lot to think about. Oh, hello. It's given me a lot to think about, and I, I, I feel like I have a much better... I'm more in touch with my tastes in games 
through my time playing it. Uh, d my time was absolutely not wasted. So, you know, that's a good thing. The, you know, you don't want your time being wasted while you're playing video games. You know, I, I feel a connection to Monster Hunter because I'm doing all this. I'm killing this Rathian, and I'm making my hunter be the best they possibly can be, right? This is not the game telling me that I need to care about this specific thing, and then, ah, okay, the game just expects me to care about it, you know? It feels lazy. It just feels lazy. Uh, not to say that Yakuza Kiwami's plot is lazy, because it really isn't. It's a very well-written plot. It's it's literally just the fact that they do zero that they put in very little effort to make you care about characters during gameplay or through gameplay I should say because it's like yeah all right I'm you know I'm I'm walking around oh god fucking damn it <laughs> come on oh no I might die I'm dead. That's what I get for dissing Yakuza, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's fine. I didn't drink my potions. I'm an idiot. Eh, it's all right. One one faint during a quest. That's that's nothing. That's nothing. Let's actually take a little bit of effort and drink up. I didn't bring any max potions. Hmm. Oh well. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm sure I'll be fine. Anyway, let's try to kill this bitch again. Yeah, like I could give endless examples of like the ways that I appreciate how story, how narrative is delivered in games. You know, I, I could talk about this till the fucking cows come home at this point. Um, it's, ju it's just hard. It's just really hard to talk about these things when two people just literally don't see it the same way. You know, like I, I've, Ab, uh, my friend Abby and I, who got me into Yakuza, had a very lengthy disagreement about this, and that's pretty much all it was. It was a disagreement. Um, she personally thought that she was very invested in the story, right? And she was very, and she felt like she was Kiryu the entire time. Meanwhile, there were times during that game where it's just like, yeah, there's there's cutscene Kiryu. And that's very, very different from gameplay Kiryu. They're two separate characters, right? Uh, my uh, gameplay Kiryu is is gameplay Kiryu, right? Oh. Uh, but cutscene Kiryu feels and acts and behaves in certain ways. But my gameplay Kiryu doesn't act and feel the same way because I don't feel the same way. It didn't do a good job of investing me into the world Again, through gameplay. Like, that's that's the problem, right? Eh, I, I feel like I'm just reiterating my same points over and over again. So I'm trying to wrap this up, but I'm also trying to fill time for the Let's Play video. So, uh, I'm, yep, there, there's the flip. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, 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 whatever. Anyway, Rathian, right? <laughs> I think Rathian's pretty cool, honestly. I think she's a bitch. But she's still fun. You know what? Let's let's talk about that then. Let's talk about story in Monster Hunter. I don't give a fuck about any of the story in Monster Hunter. I really don't. I could not give an absolute fucking shit about any of the characters, any of the plot points, any of the anything. And again, my same the same friend would get into fights during Monster Hunter Rise. Not fights. That's that's too, that's too harsh, right? I would disagree with her on how, uh, like. Because there's an achievement in the game for talking to every single villager. I hadn't talked to a single villager because I don't care, right? I guess in, in that example, Monster Hunter Rise does a very poor job of delivering its narrative through its gameplay. Because a lot of it's just cutscenes, right? So to give fair, fair, uh, fair uh, discredit, I guess, where it's due, you know, Monster Hunter Rise does just as poor of a job. But that's honestly not what I go to Monster Hunter for. I don't go to Monster Hunter for a story. I don't go to video games for, you know, cutscenes. Like, if I wanted to watch a story, I would just watch a movie. So, it, 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 yeah, it's the same thing. Like, the story I tell in Monster Hunter is not 
the same as what the characters tell. Because I'm just here to kill the cool monsters and do a good job. Oh my god. At least I broke a wing. Because each hunt in and of itself is its own story, right? Like, it's like, oh yeah, I did this, and then I did this, and then and then she flipped, and then I had to deal with that. And it was, it was fucked, right? That's, that's, that's the story of Monster Hunter. Is you're, 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 you're playing your hunter. You are the hunter. I don't know. I don't know. I have, I have very specific desires when I go into a video game. Um, yeah. Oh. Oh, right, I forgot. This is a fucking capture quest. <laughs> All right, I, um, I almost really fucked up and totally just killed that Rathian. That's okay. That's totally okay. Uh, I guess in this game, there are, a, there are a few, like, plot points that help you in terms of gameplay, right? Um, like the quest I'm doing right now. Uh, when, once I beat this quest, or I think once I beat this quest, I'll unlock uh, Y-Stones. And in that sense, I'll unlock more, um, uh, what's it called? Frenzied monsters. Like, that's, that's gameplay. That's a, that's a new chunk of gameplay. And so it's like, oh, okay. So I need to keep talking to these guys to get more Y stones to, uh, understand the game better, right? Or even this cutscene. That, that was pretty good. Because the game threw you a curveball. You're expecting, oh, I'm gonna go capture the Rathian, and then it shows you something new? Something new is here? And you get to you get to be excited to hunt that new monster. And it's like, oh, shit! The game's just opened up, oh my god! A, a Saragios! Holy shit! <laughs> You need to get out of there now. The monster is a factor we're not pre prepared to deal with. If you try to pursue it, who knows what will happen to you. Uh, abandon this quest and return at once. It's for your own safety. Ah! Uh, like, come, what was that? What was that? I want to go hunt it? And in doing so, in doing the research necessary to properly hunt that monster, you learn more about it, right? Who gives a fuck about what the other characters think about it? It's it's Monster Hunter. Who cares? My point is... I want the game to make me care. Anyway. Hunter, are you alright? Uh, still must be reeling from the fact that we pulled you out of the quest, and for that I apologize. I had to make a split-second decision. You see the monster that swooped in and attacked the Rathian was none other than a Saragios. A Steve. Saragios? Saragios? Seregios, whatever. Uh, there are f there are very few even in existence. Until now, I had only heard about them in stories. But there's something more alarming than the rarity of the monster, and that's why I called you here. Seregios are uh, said to inhabit an extremely limited area. They fight over territory, and the losers die as a result. That's exactly why so few of them exist. Uh, a monster as territorial as Seregios has no business mucking about in a place like this. It makes no sense. Something is terribly wrong, and honestly, it scares me. Uh, I feel like you just- I feel like I just saw a bird swimming underwater. <laughs> but let's approach it scientifically. Why would this bird start living underwater? Because it learned how? Or because it had no choice? I won't jump to any conclusions, but all of the, all of this has raised enough concerns that I had to get you out of there. Forgive me, I know quests like that are how you make your living. 
At any rate, uh, this new threat poses a practical problem in addition to the theoretical ones. The sand skiffs that deliver over Dundormus supplies have stopped running. Uh, we'll, have to put the, we'll have to put the town fortifications on hold until we deal with it. But the Saragios is a menace, a real fighter. Uh, an average hunter wouldn't be able to so much as scratch it. The guild wants someone capable, uh, capable on the job, a proven hunter. That's why they asked for you. I'll file, a, I'll file the quest with your guild associate later. Good luck against the Saragios. Keep a clear head and be ready for anything. You're our only hope. And while the guild is finishing with all the red tape, you should check in with the Caravaneer. Uh, when the townsfolk heard about what happened to you, they all went to him to see if they could help. Stop by, it'll be worth your while. And this is my exact point. The game said you're cool as a player. It's, it's, it's my hunter. I did the cool thing. I play video games because I'm able to do things I can't do in real life and feel like I'm cool because I really can't do that in real life. So when the game says, yo, a normal hunter couldn't do it. So you got to take care of it. It's like, oh, fuck, dude. You, I feel something. When the game says something like that to me, I felt something when Sarah Geos came in and was like, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's a new monster to hunt. Yo. Uh, and I apologize for only having two quests in this hunt. And one of them wasn't even able to be finished. Uh, but I feel like that is a perfect encapsulation of my exact feelings on the matter. And this video has been going on for 51 minutes anyway. Um, this is going to be kind of a shorter one and that's okay. You know, not every video can be an hour and 15 minutes long. <laughs> uh, thanks again for watching and listening to my rambly fucking piece on uh, why I think Yakuza Kiwami's plot is poorly delivered. It's a good plot. It's just poorly delivered. Uh, at least in my opinion. Once again, if you enjoy Yakuza, that's your thing. If you think Yakuza looks interesting, play it you might like it. There's a very good chance you'll like it. I want to give a special thanks at the very end of this video to the executive lads who make these videos possible. Um, if you are watching this, uh, <laughs> if you're watching this on the day it comes out, uh, you're watching this on the 12th, I believe. Yes, tomorrow is my birthday. Uh, and so here's what you can do. You can go over to my Patreon and give me a $1 birthday present and that will help me out more than you possibly could imagine. Uh, and in doing so, you will unlock a special limited video, or not limited, a special video, only available to all patrons. Uh, normally it'd be only available to the $5 patrons, but this time it'll be available to all of them, um, where I did the one chip challenge. So, hey, go ahead, give me that $1 birthday present, and I will give back to you a video of me in excruciating pain. Everybody wins in this in this uh, situation. Uh, and if you want to cancel, you can just cancel. That's, that's up to you. That's your prerogative. Anyway, thanks again for making it all the way to the end. I know you guys who watch these Monster Hunter videos fucking love them. So I feel like I should uh, deliver more of these. And I'm, I'm just really enjoying playing Monster Hunter 4 again. So I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Y'all are having fun. It's going to be a good time. Uh, anyway, I will catch y'all in the next video. See you then.